All right. Welcome to Muskegon Rotary. I'm Jason Pisecki. We've got a great program here today. We're going to learn about cartoon versations from Tim Wheeler. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning of the meeting. We'll also have a reflection from Bill Erickson. Uh, and we're going to award a new Paul Harris Fellow. At the end, we'll do the four-way test. Before we get into our meeting today, if we could uh, bow our heads for a moment of silence for the students and parents and families of those who lost their lives at Ross Elementary in Texas. A uh, moment of silence, please. All right, let's uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for our reflection. Memorial Day weekend? Who's looking forward to a big weekend? Free drinks. Just kidding. Can't back that up. Your house? <laughs> um, I love Memorial Day for lots of reasons, but you know, it's, it's not a, a white holiday, a black holiday, a Christian holiday, a Muslim holiday. It's an American holiday, and we're all included. And The Memorial Day observances began uh, in the Civil War, and for all those years, we've been celebrating that. My dad, Darwin Erickson, observed Memorial Day like nobody else I knew. He wasn't uh, serving in the military. He was 4F, couldn't go in, but he was a patriot. He actually died from cancer on Memorial Day 2010. And on that day, it was the first day that I began to carry on his tradition of going down to the Laketon Township Veterans Memorial Park and observing Memorial Day. I mean, there's, there's a parade, there's the Reese Puffer Marching Band and they're playing the Star Spangled Banner. There's a bunch of folks from the VFW and, and they're honoring their uh, comrades who who died in the military. It's just a big day. And when they lower the American flag slowly, a lone bugler blows taps. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that when you want to celebrate Memorial Day. And if you don't have anything to do on that particular day, it's 11 o'clock at Laketon Township Cemetery. So you're all invited. Um, Whatever you do to observe the holiday, I recommend that you connect with family, uh, families all over the country. So you could even connect via Zoom. I will be remotely connecting with my daughter in Virginia, who reminds me, she says, Dad, over Zoom, your dad jokes aren't even remotely funny. Lastly, when providing a reflection, I tend to stay careful out of respect for everyone, and I try not to mention any particular deity or any single religion. But on this particular moment, I'd ask that you would please allow me to say this prayer for Memorial Day. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, our hearts turn to you as we embrace the somber significance of Memorial Day. Bring healing to those who suffer the horrible consequences of war. Mend the rifts that pit nation against nation. Give us the grace to find alternatives to vengeance and violence and the courage to advocate for peaceful solutions to our conflicts. Center our hope in you, Lord, so that like the prophet Isaiah, we too envision a world without war. With all the hope in your power and your presence, I pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Father of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Thank you, Bill. Please be seated and enjoy lunch. And we'll be back with our visiting Rotarians and guests in about 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to get back to our meeting with our visiting Rotarians and guests. Brandon, Marianne, if you could come up with your guest, and if anyone else has a guest today, Amy will hand you the mic. Just line up by Amy and she'll, uh, we'll do the rest. Yep, just so we can see you. You're up. Hi everybody, my guests today are Jerry Harriman and Nancy Harriman. see yourself on. My guests are my wife Tracy, daughter Grace, and daughter Emma. They're here checking out Rotary. Uh, Grace and Emma are going into their third year at Grand Valley State University. Grace is studying biomedical engineering and Emma is in the health sciences. And this summer Emma has an internship at the Annis Water Research Institute and Grace has an internship at Shirtle. So, Emma, Grace, and Tracy. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brandon Davis. My guest today is Jocelyn Hines. She works at the Community Foundation at the Community Investment Officer. She is also the founder and president of the Muskegon Young Black Professionals and an all-around diversity and inclusion expert here in Muskegon County. Well, I didn't know. I don't. You, right in front of the, oh, I know. Bogus. I can I screw it up one more time though. Bogus always gets me. You know. Um, no, I'm kidding. But hey, this is my last meeting, and I just want to tell you guys that I love you and thank you for everything. Um, yeah, I'll be back a couple times a year to harass you and you know make silly comments here and there. Give Kevin Donovan you know some crap every now and then. But in all honesty, um, this is where it all started. This was my first meeting I ever came to in Muskegon. Um, you know, DJ Hilson was my sponsor. Um, terrible sponsor, by the way, remember? I still think I'm the biggest offender of the Red Star program. Darlene, is that accurate? Does that record still hold? <laughs> Darn it. Well, kudos to whoever beat me out on that. But anyway, I just from, I know obviously my family's not here, but I just want to thank everyone here for the support that you show myself, the Boys and Girls Club, my kids, my wife, and everything over the last seven years. I'm gonna miss the heck out of you guys. Thank you, Dakota, for everything you've done for our community, uh, for the youth of Muskegon, and, and you'll be missed. Don't be a stranger. Okay, on to our program. Doug Wood is going to introduce our speaker today. And good afternoon. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce Tim Wheeler, although as I watched him move around the room, uh, it might be one of those people that doesn't need an introduction because an awful lot of you seem to know Tim. So, um, But I'm going to read what he gave us first, and I've got a couple of things to add to that. Tim Wheeler is the founder of Wheeler Creative Studios and a creator of Cartoonversation, award-winning cartoons and interactive read-along books designed to help kids laugh and talk about life's most difficult challenges. His most recent books on COVID safety, diversity, equity, and inclusion were all honored at this year's Healthcare Advertising Awards as well as this year's Education Advertising Awards. His award-winning humor column, Obstructed Views, appeared in newspapers, magazines, and radio stations throughout the country. His writing has garnered nearly 300 national and international awards for animation, radio, print, and television. He holds degrees from Western Michigan University. Go Broncos, thank you. Northwestern University. 
and Villanova University. Go Cats Part 2. Go Cats. <laughs> you can see a lot of his work on his website, cartoonversation.com. I wanted to give a couple of people credit. I, I'm glad I get a, the chance to introduce Tim. He came to the attention of the DEI committee when I was chair uh, through two very important and influential people in my life uh, in my journey in DEI. Alexis Dye, many of you may know Alexis and the work that she's done with health disparities, and Nancy McCarthy, who um, affirmed uh, Tim and, and the work that he, he does. And so I want to say thank you to them. Tim and I met last December, and uh, I was struck by his creativity, his sense of humor, and uh, the passion for, that he has for making a difference in the world. He came to the DEI committee and uh, kind of gave us all that same impression. So I wanted to uh, let you all know that the DEI committee support his work financially, as did the Grants Committee. So thank you, Mark, and the Grants Committee for your uh, follow-up on that. And with nothing else, uh, Tim Wheeler. We have nowhere to go but down from there, Doug. Thank you very much for that. All right, my biggest challenge is going to be staying here because normally I wander everywhere when I talk, but Vogus is going to throw a shoe at me, so I will do my best to stay put. All right. Um, late March, uh, I went to Royal Oak for a concert, and I saw Colin Hay. And if you know who he is, great. What you, of course you do, Rich. Um, if you don't, he was the former lead singer frontman for the 80s band Men at Work. He has turned into an incredible singer-songwriter. His jokes may be even better than his songs, so I recommend them. But anyway, I'm at the concert, and he's doing, he's a great, great Scottish accent, which I will not do, um, and he's telling this story, and I'm laughing like everybody else, and then I'm thinking, I've heard this joke before. He did this joke in a video that I saw 15 years ago. So why do I tell you that? Why did I go down that rabbit hole? Because I know a whole bunch of people in here, and partway in this, con this presentation, you're going to go, he did that joke before. <laughs> that guy's only got like one track in his mind, and that one's a little rusty as it is. So I could say I'm an idiot, which is true, but I'm going to take a pragmatic approach. If it's good enough for a Grammy Award winner to repeat himself on stage, then by golly, so am I. So my name is Tim Wheeler, and as Doug said, I own Wheeler Creative Studios, home of the Cartoon Versation. So our mission, three words, to rescue childhood. Our vision, if I had the magic wand, what I want is a planet covered in kids that are safe, secure, and silly. And I'll go all day on that third one. And the focus, what I'm trying to do, and this is where I'm going to try and sound like a grown-up, we're trying to become Michigan's leader in the development and distribution of trauma-informed products, i.e. the cartoon versation, so that all of us can help kids show us how they can be those healthy, happy people that we desperately need them to be. So what is the cartoon versation? Well, thank you so much for asking. So the cartoon versation, according to a smart person, which is not me, is structured video followed by facilitated conversation. You watch a cartoon and you talk about it. So that's part of it. Or interactive read-alouds. You read a book with a kid. You read it out loud, they read it out loud, you read it separately, you do it on Zoom, whatever. And you talk about it. So those are the pieces that we're doing, and here are the topics. Anything that makes it hard for an eight-year-old to be an eight-year-old. I said this to uh, somebody earlier, I said it to you, Kim, when we were sitting at the table, is that I'm constantly conflicted when I get a new project. I'm like, yeah, a new book. Oh, a new topic. Like, we're never going to run out of them. So I still struggle with that, but really anything that's bothering an eight-year-old, we're trying to build pieces that can help them get through it. So, oh, what did I do with them? There they are. Here are some of the topics. So we have the books. Cyberbullying, self-esteem, diversity, equity, truancy, which was my present to DJ, who's not here, but that's okay. <laughs> School violence, kitchen fire safety, 
pledging to be kind, which is connected with Chief Gale's Ride with Pride program. Oh, I'm sensing a theme. Ride with pride, wear a seatbelt. Ride with pride, wear a helmet. See, I just steal everybody else's ideas. And then the one that we just finished this week, Book One of Water Safety, When in Doubt, Don't Go Out, or if you're Spanish speaking, there's the other version. So there are, I think, 18 cartoons that are online. They're all free, cartoonversation.com. And thank you, Jeff, thank you, Jeff Jacobson. I own that word now. Um, not that anybody else wanted it, but I own it. And then there are about 30 different books. The books are ebooks and print. They're not free, but they can be and I can explain how to you in a little bit. So, how is the cartoonversation made? Well, one of the places you're gonna find kids, classrooms. So we've done everything we can to make them classroom ready. A lot of people say that stuff is classroom ready and a lot of people rightly say that their stuff needs to be in the classroom. And then they hand the teacher the 47 pound three ring binder and the three day in service to tell them to figure out how to squeeze that in. Doesn't work. We used to have, uh, oh, I'm going down a rabbit hole, but I gotta finish this one now. When I worked in healthcare, we had a doctor in the ER that when somebody would report with kidney stones, his first question was not, how are you? His first question was, where do you teach? Because they don't even get to go to the bathroom. So, and he said like seven out of 10 times, they would tell him which school they taught at. So here's what is the, the stuff that makes these things classroom ready. Everything is aligned with the Michigan State teaching standards, grades K through 12. Everything is aligned with the national and Michigan social, social emotional learning core competencies. Almost everything, there's one exception, is written at the fourth grade reading level. And there's something else that's always there, technical advisors, because I'm a knucklehead and I'm not the one in charge of the serious stuff. So we always bring in an expert. Chief Gale is working on one with me right now where he's the technical advisor. Um, Holly Alway from uh, Safe Kids is one. And Doug, I'm glad you mentioned Alexis. If you don't know Alexis Die, go meet Alexis Die. This is the most elegant, most graceful, most wonderful person I know. And 99 times out of 100, I don't care what you're wearing, it won't be as cool as whatever she's wearing. <laughs> but Alexis, her day job, if I've got it right, is she's Director of Marketing and Communications at Hackley Community Care. And Doug alluded to this one. She's also the Muskegon County Health Disparities Coalition Chairperson. But what, a lot of, what too many people don't know about her is that she got called by the governor's office last fall, and she was appointed to the Michigan Black Leadership Advisory Council. And then they made her the committee chairperson for the health subcommittee of that. Why she chooses to hang out with me that seems to be the only strike against her, but she is just an incredible, incredible person. So those are the things that are in the book and the cartoons. Here's what's not. You, me, people. Here's the first reason why. I was lucky enough to spend an afternoon with my childhood hero, Chuck Jones, the guy who created Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. And he said to me, and he always, my boy, that's how he said, my boy, don't use humans, that's what movies are for. Use critters. And Elmer Fudd wasn't my idea, so don't blame me. So I'm like, okay. So I just did it to honor my childhood hero. That's really the reason. Here's what I stumbled into, and Alexis helped me with this. My characters aren't human, so here's what else they aren't. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, straight, gay, trans, Republican, libertarian, Democrat, left hand, right hand, vegan, carnivore. All of the things that make us us. All the things that make me look like this and you look like you. There's nothing wrong with that unless you're a child who doesn't look like that or feel like that or live like that or think like that. So you can either break your neck trying to make sure that you are culturally diverse using humans and you, I'm sorry, you're never going to get it right. You'll get it close, but you're never going to get it right. Or you can have a pumpkin with low self-esteem because he's the last one picked in the patch. And miraculously, this kid now feels like it's like puppet therapy. They will talk about this pumpkin. They're talking about themselves. But the spotlight is no longer on them. So you can talk with them. Now, here's how you can talk with them. All of the cartoons, all of the books have what's called a cartoonversation card. Oh, look, it's like SCTV, 3D. Like, um, Five questions, five factoids. That's it. 
if you can read at a fourth grade level, you can lead a cartoon conversation. And if you can't read at a fourth grade level, then do this. Hey, would you kids like to read this out loud to me and then lead the cartoon conversation and I'll stand here and act like I know what I'm doing? Doesn't matter. As long as you get in interaction with those kids and trust me, you connect with them, you ask them one question, you're done. They will talk, they will open up. And now you know where their fires are burning. Here's the alternative. I'm going to guess that everyone in this room has a heart this big. But if I'm a grown-up, and Michael, let's say that it's Mike Vogus, the third grader. Hi, Mike. How are you today? Well, it was great till the creepy old guy leaned in and asked me how I was. Now I think it's a quiz, and I'm going to shut my mouth. Well-intended people sometimes need a key to open that door. That is all these things are. That's it. You know how to be a great person. People who are trained know how to do their jobs, but we don't all always know how to connect with the kids. And I'm not saying that these are the end all be all. Well, yeah, they are. But if you wanna use these, use these. Connect with kids this way. Now, why? This is my favorite part. Jason, I hope I'm okay. Why do we have a cartoon conversation? This is the interactive part, and I can feel several people collectively go, oh no, he's gonna call. Don't worry, I won't. All you have to do is raise your hand. Who in the room has ever been eight years old? <laughs> A few people didn't raise their hand. The Scientologist would like to talk to you in the hallway. Okay, preferably between seven and nine, but no judgment. Here's what that means. All of us grew up in the same neighborhood. It's called childhood. For a lot of people, that's the greatest place they've ever lived. And when they're having a rough time, they visit it. And that sustains them. God, I've said this a million times. For way too many people, it's the worst neighborhood they've ever been in. And they cannot get away from it. We cannot get away from it. You can run, you can drink, you can do drugs, you can do therapy, you can do anything, but you cannot ever fully get away from it. I don't want people to have that anymore, including the grown-ups. So one of the reasons we've made it this way is that so the grown-up can find his or her eight-year-old, and maybe, just maybe, if you help today's eight-year-old, it'll take a little bit of the edge off of that neighborhood that you wish weren't your original home. That's why we do these things. Now, are you in business to help kids? Professionally, maybe not. Personally, I think we all are. But I said earlier that the books cost money, but they can be free. Here's how. Oh, since I see John and Randy, thank you, MAISD. Thank you, sponsors who want to help bring these books. So if you are part of an organization, business, or an individual, or if you've got a guilty rich uncle living on the beach who's got money he's got to get rid of, We'll put your name, we'll put your face, we'll put your logo. Get in the books. Help out. If there's a topic that we haven't touched on yet, let me know. We'll do it. My rule is, I, I mean this, it's, it's genuinely this simple. If it's something that's hurting an eight-year-old, we're on. We're going to do it. I don't ever want to quit. As I tell my wife, as long as I've got a pulse, we're going to keep doing these things. And I've been lucky enough to, to, to do other things that I've loved, but not like this. Uh, this, this has just been, been such a joy. So, oh, this book, which Doug mentioned, and I, I am really happy about this because it's the first time I ever tried to write in rhyme scheme, and it actually worked. Um, so this is about inclusion called Ellis Belongs, and he's a platypus. So for my biology people, you already get the connection there. Uh, but this one won gold at the healthcare uh, awards, and then it won gold at the education awards. You can have a copy of this, but it's going to cost you one business card. If you want a copy of this, give me your card. And yes, I will harass you. But you can say, stop calling me, and I will stop calling you. And if you don't, there's John, so he'll make sure that I stop calling you. <laughs> but if you want a copy of this, that is yours for the business card. If you want to swing by my studio, B 
because you've heard a vicious rumor that there's always beer, wine, and cocktails, which is true. That's fine too. And I'm in the old rich, what is it? I Heart Clear Channel, what do you want to call it? Ghost Town? <laughs> I'm wandering the halls by myself in there. So if you ever want to come in and talk about ideas that you have, if there are kids that you want me to talk to, talk with, one of my favorite things is when I meet a group of kids and I go, hey, I live here, I make cartoons, and I can't draw a stick figure. And it doesn't take the kids long to figure out, they're like, you know, that guy's not very bright, and he's got kind of a cool job. And then they find out that the 10th or 11th ranked animation university in the country is Ferris. And it's in Grand Rapids. And it's right here. So. Anybody, watch a Pixar movie. You can make dinner, eat dinner, do the dishes, and take a nap while they roll the credits. Every job imaginable is possible in the world of animation. So I love telling kiddos that, too. Um, given the week we've had, uh, all I ask is this. We all have an opportunity to listen. We really, truly have an opportunity to listen. If these help you listen, Great. Remember, the cartoons are free and the cards are on there. If something else helps you listen, even better. But thank you for listening to me. Thank you. You said you wanted me to stay up for Q&A, yes? Yes, Q&A. Oh, well, thanks, thanks so much, Tim. That was oh, thanks, a Jason. fascinating presentation. So, does anybody have any questions for Tim? Roger Morganson, right in front. Yeah. Hey, good to see you. Nice to see you, and I, I'm glad that uh, my former employer, the Consumers Energy Foundation, is one of your sponsors. Yeah, they are. And, you, and this guy is persistent. Man, <laughs> until we cut the check. No, no. Um, appreciate everything That's you're doing. Accurate, yeah. And as a Norton Shore City Council member, I know you're doing some great stuff with Chief Gale. But given the week we've had, um, do you have some books? It, you mentioned eight years old, and unfortunately, a lot of these victims were around yeah. that age in Texas. Have you done anything we're going into the schools after this traumatic event, or, or are there others like you elsewhere in the country that come in and help, try to help these kids with cartoons? Actually, Roger, I, I hate to say this because it's going to sound like I'm putting myself isolated. I've been looking for years for other people who are doing this kind of thing. There's a ton of great stuff, don't get me wrong. But this particular approach, I, I just haven't found yet. So I hope I'm answering this the right way, is that I'm, I wouldn't say that like, I'm qualified to go in as a counselor or as a social worker. But um, one of the things, and this was a, a wonderful teacher, I love the way she spun this. And I'm glad you asked this, because these are designed with something I called structured flexibility. Lisa, I made that up at Hackley. Um, and basically, it's you've got a fence, but within that fence, you can do all sorts of crazy creative things. So there was a book on, or a cartoon on scheduling too many activities. And the teacher had the cartoon conversation card, and she was walking around with it like this, and she let the conversation organically flow to stress. And a little girl, and John, you've heard the story a million times, a little girl raises her hand, and I'll never forget this, because the teacher says, what does stress look like? She goes. She goes, well, stress for me is Thursday because uh, Thursday is the day my dad's supposed to pick me up and he always forgets to pick me up. And uh, last Thursday there was that thunderstorm, so I'm standing outside and I think, should I, should I stand outside in the rain or should I go in there? But I keep texting him to call him to get him to come pick me up. But I've got my mom's phone and he hates my mom, so he wouldn't pick up. So I didn't know what I was supposed to do, so I just stood there in the rain for a while. So those days are stressful to me. And she said it like we'd do a grocery list. So as sad as that is, what the teacher did was for the rest of that school year, they used this resource that they had in the building where she sat at a computer after school until this person, who is his father, I will not call dad, had to get out of his car and go and get her. Cost the school nothing. So what I'm hoping is that the conversations about Buffalo and the conversations about Texas are happening right now. But there's such a difficult thing to bring up. If you can do it with a slight smile and a slight laugh to at least calm them down. These things in the hands of a, of a great teacher, of a great parent, of, of, of a great clergy person, anyone, they can easily turn it and follow the kid's lead. So if a child wants to talk about what they saw in the news, this will help set them up. I hope that answers, but I don't, yeah, I don't directly have one, but that's kind of the idea behind it. Yeah, thanks, Roger. 
All right, Darlene has a question. Having worked in the healthcare system and been a probation officer and family counselor for King County Juvenile Court, have you dealt with sexual assault? Not yet. It is on the list. Uh, we simply haven't gotten to one about that yet, but it is absolutely because you are one of several people who have said. And uh, I, I will just throw this out there now. I know that I have four or five people that I consider highly qualified to be my technical advisors, but that's another, I didn't even think of this. If you want to be a technical advisor because this is an area of expertise for you, please let me know. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry we haven't gotten to that one yet. All right, one more question from Melissa. You're like Donahue. Like fall on the ground. All the, all the 30 year olds are going, who? What's a, Don what? What's a Donahue? So I'm the director of Reed Muskegon. We work with low literacy adults and their families. So I'm obviously very curious about if there's ways to integrate this into our work, but I'm just wondering about your experience using this with multiple family groups together. Do kids have as open of conversations when their parents are there? Does it work? Or um, is it better to bring the kids to a, um, into an environment where there's someone else facilitating, I guess is my, my question. This is where I'm about to step in an area where I know the words, sort of, but I don't. As I sat with um, three school psychologists who were explaining to me how they can use this tier one, tier two, tier three, and that's kind of where I faded out because I didn't understand. So I can only tell you secondhand that they have done that thing with, with small groups where there have been some parents and there have been some kids and they said that it went very well. I would think that it's the read the room scenario where you, you, you do have to, and that's where the experts are, are, are so valuable, is that eh, maybe this group wouldn't work together, maybe it will, maybe we need to isolate and go 1v1. The thing that I can shed a little light on is the classrooms that I've sat in. And there's one in particular where we did episode 12, which is um, death of a loved one. And we've actually started a whole series on grief and mourning, uh, working with Lori's place down in St. Joe. But anyway, um, we intentionally, spoiler alert, there's a turtle who dies in the book. Um, we intentionally had a pet in addition to humans because I knew, because I, I remembered this as a kid, Death is death, and the first time it happens to you, whether it's grandma or a tadpole, it's devastating. And, and I've seen too many times adults go, oh, that's nothing yet. It's everything. So we're covering that one, and I was a little concerned, and um, one kid kind of opened up, and she started to tear up because she had just lost a parent. Turns out three kids in the room had lost a parent in the last two years, and then several had lost, because they're at that age where they lose their grandparents. They had lost that, and, and it's one of those things that I took a picture in my mind, because it would have been so inappropriate to take a photo of it, but they were all on this rug together, and a bunch of them had their arms around each other, and they were patting each other on the back, and they're nine. And it was the most heartbreaking, sweetest thing to watch them come together, and there were, you know, teachers often will tell me about the, the fringe kid, like, don't be offended if this one either has an outburst or ignores you. And that class in particular, there were two, they were physically in the middle of it by the end of it. Um, and I, I am listening to myself going, it sounds like I'm so happy and I know the subject matter, so it's that conflict again. Um, but I hope that answers the question and gives some light on that. If I may ask something, low literacy adults? Yes. Talk to me. Yeah, that this may be a good fit, okay. All right, let's have another round of applause for Tim Wheeler. Can I leave this here for now? Uh, on behalf of your presentation, Tim, our club is gonna make a donation to community economic development in your name, and thanks again for coming and sharing about Cartoonversations. Okay, on to birthdays, and I scanned the room with my birthday list, and I think only one of them's here today and I'm not going to sing to myself, so I'm going to find a volunteer who has similar singing ability to me. I think Bob Lukens is the guy. <laughs> well, let me do the Thank you. first. <laughs> Does you see what you get for sitting in front? 
All right, our birthdays, Marty Seitzema on the 27th, Jeff Fortenbacher on the 29th, Donetta Kidd on the 29th, and I have a birthday on the 1st. It's inconsequential. It's not even an important birthday that's coming up, so pay no attention to it. Uh, but, Bob, do you want to lead us in some happy birthdays? one birthday? and a two and a happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. That was my birthday present to you. I didn't sing this week, so. Okay, our member spotlight. This is a feature we've been doing this year to highlight our vocational avenue of service. And today we're gonna to learn about Blake Kramer and what he does during the day. My name is Blake Kramer. I joined Rotary, Rotary I think it's three years ago now, I wanna say. And the main reason I joined Rotary is one, just the camaraderie, but also, you know, a need to want to help grow Muskegon and, you know, figure out what some of the underlying needs are in the area and how you can help create the world a better place. I just recently got married to my wife, Danielle Kramer. I love to be outside. I love to go, you know, hunting, somewhat involved with fishing, really just being outdoors. In the summertime, I really enjoy going up north to our cabin up in Hesperia where you know, we have our farm. My main job is financial planning. Me and my dad work on a team together. We help people get a good financial strategy in place to either you know, get prepared for retirement, build wealth for certain goals, pass on that wealth to their children, or help maintain wealth in retirement. I would say what I have to offer to the club is, you know, just an outgoing personality. Uh, I also, you know, I have a lot of ideas. You know, I really like to think and, you know, I, I, I think I like to think sometimes I have some out of the box ideas that, you know, maybe people aren't thinking about or being able to bring other people's ideas together and actually get an action in place. I think with my job and helping other people and, you know, being able to experience, you know, both ends of the spectrum, blue collar, white collar, collar work. I'm able to, you know, see a lot of, you know, different personalities and deal with a lot of different people that helps me, you know, understand our community better or the people around us. All right. Thank you, Blake. Jenny Spray has a special presentation. Jenny? Well, Jay, I'm always struck at how tall Jason is. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to do a quick reminder for anyone who is interested in taking advantage of the district match where you contribute $500 and um, they will match that so that you can get a Paul Harris award for yourself to give to someone else. Uh, the window is closing, so if you're interested, please see me. And speaking of Paul Harris awards, that is why I'm here today. In 1957, Rotary International established the Paul Harris Fellow Award to honor Paul Harris, one of the three founders of Rotary. Rotary created this eponymous award to express appreciation for the financial support of the humanitarian and educational programs of the Rotary Foundation. This award is one of Rotary's most prestigious honors. He once said, dreaming is not so bad if one dreams good dreams and makes them come true. Rotarians make dreams a reality through the Rotary Foundation programs that provide educational opportunities, food, potable water, sanitation, health care, immunizations, and shelter for millions of persons here at home and around the world. Today, we are going to honor a deserving individual who also dreams good dreams and makes them come true. To help with the presentation, I invite Mary Ann Gorman to come forward and tell us about our honoree 
who will join the worldwide ranks of Paul Harris Fellows. Mary Ann. Suddenly you all look really serious out there. <laughs> um, thank you, Jenny. It's really my honor today um, to present this individual with a very prestigious Paul Harris Fellow Award. A native of Grand Rapids, a graduate of Calvin College, and Michigan State's College of Osteopathic Medicine. He practiced family medicine in Muskegon for almost 20 years. He has given generously of his time to promote the quality and standard of medical practice in Muskegon. He has served on multiple, multiple boards in the community, including leadership positions in the West Michigan Osteopathic Association, the Muskegon Physician Association, West Shore Health Network, and the Osteopathic Foundation of West Michigan. In 2006, he closed his family practice to assume the position of full-time medical director of Harbor Hospice, a role he has held for the past 16 years. It is true that I actually stopped wearing Harbor Hospice swag when I went to Meyer because multiple times people would come up to me and say, you stole my physician. Dr. Jerry Harriman has had an enormous impact on the growth and high quality of hospice and palliative care, which is offered all along the lakeshore. He has a wonderful reputation as a gifted teacher. He is an assistant clinical professor for MSU's Department of Family and Community Medicine. He serves on the Graduate Medical Education Committee of Trinity Health, Muskegon. And for years, he has generously shared his practice experience and provided rotations for dozens of third and fourth year medical students, residents, and interns, teaching them both the science and the art of hospice and palliative care. Last year, Mercy Health Grand Rapids awarded him the Hospice and Palliative Medicine Fellowship Educator of the Year Award. He's the author of many professional articles and a frequent speaker at professional meetings and conferences. And during COVID, like so many of our frontline healthcare workers, he has provided calm and reassuring support to staff. He's responded to the daily challenges of delivering care during this pandemic. He has set an example also for integrating technology with bedside and patient side care using telehealth communication as another safe way to stay in touch with his patients. Over the past seven years, he has led the broad expansion of community-based palliative care services, including the deployment of a full team of practitioners to provide comfort care and symptom management to individuals upstream from hospice who continue to receive active treatment. He is a loving and devoted husband to his wife, Nancy father to his son, Mike, who lives in California with two children, and his daughter, Marie, who lives in Australia. I stopped complaining about my son living two time zones away when Marie moved to Australia. <laughs> she and her husband have two children, so he and Nancy have four beautiful grandchildren. Jerry keeps in shape. He doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk, he runs, actually. He's an avid runner and marathoner. He's also um, a lover of dark chocolate and three musketeers bars. <laughs> Even though <clears throat> some of you know 
I'm a U of M grad. Because of Jerry, I actually root for the Spartans, unless they play U of M. He attends many MSU football and basketball games. He's a writer with a sharp intellect and a very keen sense of humor. He's a man of deep faith who is kind and compassionate. He's a person that I truly believe reflects the values of Rotary by putting service above self. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Jerry Harriman for this Paul Harris Award. cozy. <laughs> Today, my fellow Rotarians, we move closer to a more peaceful world as Dr. Gerald Harriman becomes a Paul Harris Fellow. Jerry, you are being recognized today as a Paul Harris Fellow in special appreciation for how your life exemplifies the humanitarian and educational objectives of the Rotary Foundation. You were designated to receive this recognition by Mary Ann Gorman. On behalf of the Rotary Foundation Board of Trustees, you receive three emblems of a Paul Harris Fellow, a certificate, a lapel pin, and a medallion. The certificate states you have been named a Paul Harris Fellow in appreciation of tangible and significant assistance given for the furtherance of better understanding and, significant, and friendly relations between peoples of the world. We encourage you to wear your pin to all Rotary events to show support for the Rotary Foundation and its programs that save and invigorate the lives of people around the world. Please accept our congratulations and sincere appreciation for your commitment to our shared goals of world understanding and peace. Rotarians and friends, please congratulate and recognize the newest Paul Harris Fellow in the world, Dr. Gerald Harriman, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I am completely shocked and surprised. <laughs> so, um, you know, many people to thank for this. And I want to say I thank you for um, your group and how much um, you care about each other. It's just really evident. And I think it's really remarkable. And uh, some of the comments, you know, it's fun but you serve, and you serve beyond yourselves, and I think that's what's really cool about it. And I really enjoyed learning today about your program for these kids. Sometimes I just shake my head, I wanna say, can we just let kids be kids? Can we do that really, you know? But then things happen, that's the kind of world we live in, and so people need to step up, and what you've done, and what you're continuing to do, and handle some of the tough stuff, this is, um, so I just, I just love hearing about that. Uh, thank you, Mary Ann, for the confidence uh, 16 years ago, um, allowing me to be in that role. So that's very important to me. Um, I was just a country bumpkin solo practitioner, family doc, you know, and I didn't have any, um, cared a lot about my patients. Um, Never thought I'd be in a role like that. So when that uh, opportunity came my way, it was pretty tough to decide. I'm kind of a, I'm a plow horse. I like to get in the field and plow a straight line, then I'll turn around at the other end and go back the other way and make it even straighter than the last one before. And I'll do that day after day. Now that would drive my wife crazy. She'd say, what are you doing that for? So, I just like making it better and better and better and better. I like finding things that need to be fixed and how do I make them better? And uh, that's what I like to pour myself into. And um, this has opportunity to do this for the last 16 years. It's just something I love my family practice office, and, but I've enjoyed this work too. Um, it's, um, did, you get, did you talk to my mom about some of those things? I mean, wow, that's, that's like coming. 
You know, it's um, I have many people to thank too, like Dr. Len Wright. I want to thank Dr. Len Wright, who's um, he was ahead of me and introduced me to it as well. And he um, he was a pioneer in this area, and a lot of what's happened at the hospital and in the communities because of what groundwork he laid for those of us behind him who were able to carry it on. Um, I also want to thank our current leadership, Sue Hausman, and others too um, at Harbor who they've done nothing but support I, grand ideas I've had or thoughts that we've discussed and, and want to uh, utilize or implement or do something even um, you know even when it's a challenge for us to uh, be able to uh, bring it about um, they're right there with us trying to make it all happen and so I want to thank you for that too and I just um, I'm still so amazed at being able to be up here and uh, oh I see there's Dr. Crandall nice to see you um, and I uh, just can't thank you enough um, for this honor this is really amazing to me appreciate it Right, on to our committee reports and announcements and we don't want a repeat of the convention center incident so I'm sure everyone who comes up here is going to give a great succinct announcement and keep us going along your the pressures on uh, Andy below Marsha Hovey Wright Roger Morgenstern uh, I haven't seen America oh you are here and you're first on the list you're first on the list and then I am making uh, Arn did you want to make your announcement or you want me to okay and then uh, I'm going to play Tim Lightband. So, you want to get this way? This mark. Hello, my name is Merica Dobry. I am not going to talk to you about parties in the park. I'm going to let Jenny talk to you about parties in the park. I have picked up from. Trophy House, all of the orders for the Rotary Apparel that came in. Um, if you were lucky enough to snag your Rotary swag, um, I have it here for pickup. I really don't want to lug it around a whole lot, so please do see me after the meeting. Um, if you still wanted to order some things, let me know. I can reactivate the shop, but I'm not going to do that until after parties in the park because I'm a little bit busy. Um, but we can definitely do that if we need to, so definitely don't forget. Jenny? All right, I'm Jenny McNeil, and here to talk to you about Parties in the Park, which is June 3rd, coming up very quickly. And we really, really, really need volunteers for the second shift. So if you've already signed up, thank you to those of you who have. Um, consider maybe staying for the second shift or talking to people who aren't here because we really need, we don't have enough people <laughs> as of right now to manage uh, the second shift. So, link too. But I'm going to sign up. I have this here today too. Hi. I'm Andy Bilo. I am uh, co chair of uh, your DEI committee as of a couple of months ago. Um, and it's good to see you all again. I've been away because I was um, on, on these days, I was going to coming together for racial understanding, a uh, series of uh, workshops that lasted five weeks. And Alexis Dye was our facilitator, and she's everything that you've heard. And one day I even got uh, Jocelyn Hines, who, who filled in, um, another rock star. Good to see you, Jocelyn. Um, I wanted to let you all know that um, your DEI committee has um, purchased a table um, or is sponsoring a table at the um, MLK Unity Breakfast, which normally takes place in January, but was rescheduled to, to uh, June 10th. I believe it starts at 7.30 a.m. and it is at the Convention Center. Um, and uh, we have an eight-top table. Um, I expect the, the places will go really fast, but if you're interested, um, in joining us at that table, uh, let me know. You can just shoot me an email and I'll put you down, first come, first served. 
Uh, lastly, uh, we wanted to let you know about um, an, an interesting opportunity that came our way. Uh, the May Rotary Magazine had an article um, about the human library, the library where the books are human beings. I don't know if, if any of you have read that, um, but uh, we actually have a similar project going on right now here in Muskegon at Muskegon Area District Library uh, where uh, you can nominate somebody that you think would be a good human book and basically uh, it's an opportunity for people to to check out a person rather than a book it's a really cool concept so uh, the deadline for signing up is uh, the end of may which is here so if you want to sign up or nominate somebody uh, just let me know and i can connect you with sarah renza masibinga who is in charge of this thank you Hello, Marsha Hovey Wright, and I'm also on the DEI committee. And uh, on the 17th of June, and I've mentioned this before, uh, we are cooperating or working with uh, Muskegon Heights to put on the Juneteenth uh, weekend. And uh, our day is going to be Friday the 17th, and that's going to be really fun. We're going to, we've hired, with the money that we've uh, allocated, we've hired a reggae band, and we're going to be giving out free food, including Curry Kitchen and the fish guy, <laughs> and uh, among other things. And I need, actually, we did pretty well at the lunch line, um, but I need about 12 more volunteers, uh, mostly with kids activities like uh, keeping the kids safe on bounce house and the popcorn candy snow cones etc uh, we have a few spots uh, for cleanup and serving food seven to nine so you don't have to uh, work the whole time you get two hour shift and then have fun um, so uh, please I will bring your calendars next week I had a lot of people say they didn't know or they had to check with their wife so bring your calendars next week and let's fill this thank you I'm setting up tables so then I can have fun during the event. Um, I'm Roger Morgenstern, and I have to say I'm also the new board chairman for Harbor Hospice, and I couldn't be prouder of Dr. Harriman. So there you go. Sh shameless plug, find me if you want. Um, I am, uh, I'm here today for the Seaway Run. You should have all gotten an email this week from Kim, uh, from uh, Rob Taylor, our uh, illustrious chair right over there. We are still in need of volunteers for the Seaway Run. Uh, not only to help set up, take down, work the course, but also we need participants. I'm in the 5K walk, so somehow I think I'm going to be helping take down. i got to figure that out. But um, you can use the sign-up link that was in the email, or you can see Rob uh, or myself or any of our other – oh, and uh, the sign-up sheet is also in the back here. So you can do it the old-fashioned way and sign up. In fact, I need to go look at that. So we do need help. Uh, we're, our goal is to have 100 volunteers, and uh, we're getting there, but we still need help. It's June 25th. My, my uh, oldest son is, and his wife are coming over from Lansing to run in it, so maybe I can get credit for that. I don't know. So um, hope to see you out there. It's going to be a great day. Thanks. Okay, I have a few club announcements. Uh, the first is from the... Rotary Club of Coopersville from Luann DeVries, and their club is making a donation to Orville Crane on their club's behalf. So thank you, Rotary of Coopersville. Uh, also got a very nice handwritten thank you from Judge Maria Lattice Hoops for her Paul Harris fellow that she received a couple weeks ago, and uh, she was definitely surprised. So good job on getting her here and uh, having her receive the award. Uh, Arne Bozart let me know that we completed a successful fruit, food truck distribution uh, last week, 11 Rotarians, plus uh, we had one Interactor volunteer and distribute over 7,000 pounds of food at Temple Methodist Church in the Heights, uh, and that served approximately 180 households. So that's our last food truck of the year. And how many food trucks did we do all together, Arne? Just one this year. We did 10 last year. 10 last year and one this year. So that's. That was yesterday? All right. And then the last announcement I have is from Tim Lipan uh, for the Rotary Clippers car load party on June 8th. It's a Wednesday. And for the low, low price of $5, you'll get into the game at the Clippers at Marsh Field, and you get to have a hot dog and hang out with your fellow Rotarians, have the beverage of your choice, adult beverage, or you can have a, have a pop. And VIP seating, according to Tim, so you want to you want to go out there. So um, 
Before we, before we move on to our raffle, let's just have a round of applause for all our announcements today. A lot of good stuff going on. Okay, raffle. What are we doing first today? Ed Henrickson. Zero one three for ten dollars. Oh, Susan. Nine nine one for five bucks. <laughs> this happens very often. Now we got to work in a guest for twenty bucks. Twenty dollars. Oh, our singer Bob Lucan. See, it pays. It pays to sing. <laughs> yeah. Put that to good use. Okay. You did. It's kind of like a Harry Carey version. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of our meeting. I want to thank Tracy, Emma, Grace for joining us along with Jocelyn, Nancy. Tim, thank you for a wonderful presentation and congratulations, Dr. Harriman, on your Paul Harris Fellow. Next week, we'll be back at the Lake House and our program is going to be about Muskegon Community College's DEI initiative. So you wanna come out and hear Ken James speak about what they have going on out at the college. If everyone could please rise, we'll do the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? All right, we're adjourned. <laughs>